Hey, you guys, what's up? My name is Brittany. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I am a part-time reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. And today I have another reseller hangout with my friend, Matt, the Aussie flipper. This is my first out of United States um, reseller, which is really awesome. We're going global now, um, yeah. but I'm excited to have you here. Matt, could you just go ahead and introduce yourself for everyone? Yeah, hey guys. And firstly, a big thank you to Brittany for getting me on the channel. I've, um, I've followed you, I reckon, from about the 400 subscriber mark in your youtube journey wow thank um, you I've, I've really just kind of followed you along the entire way and i just know that you've recently hit a thousand subscribers so i really just wanted to thank you well first of all congratulate you on that because that's um, a pretty big achievement for any youtuber out there thank you um i guess for me a bit of my background i've um i've been reselling now for a few months um i've sort of been more full-time for the last couple of months but my real sort of background background is in sporting in the sporting industry um so i've been in the aussie rules or the afl um, which is basically the equivalent of the nfl um, mm -hmm. over there in the united states and i've ultimately worked for a few different football clubs over the last 10 years in a sales type environment mm -hmm. um, and then with obviously the coronavirus taking place i was in a position where i had to actually move back home um, because the the state um, that i was living in was probably one of the most affected um, with the virus um so i kind of found myself just back at home uh, back with my parents i've been away for about five years and wow. i really needed to get into something um i actually lived in canada as well for two years so I'd, I'd really been in a lot of different places um and then suddenly you know maybe five or six months ago i find myself back in australia um back in my own hometown back living with mum and dad which i have been for the last couple of months um and i've just i've fallen into reselling and i absolutely love it um mm -hmm. It sort of keeps that, I guess, that sales mentality that I've always had ticking and, and alive. Mm. Um, and it's obviously given me some income as well when it's obviously a pretty difficult time out there. So um, I've sort of been, I sort of gradually progressed from casual into full time, and full time's only been the last couple of months. So yeah. I'm definitely a newbie for sure with my reselling. Um, but the background for me has always been sales. And mm. I think it really just kind of transitions into to what I'm doing now pretty, um, pretty easily. Yeah, I feel like you lucked you lucked out in that sense that you kind of already had the background, so it was like easy for you to just maneuver your way in. So it's the same guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how did you initially know of like reselling online, or you just already just had previous knowledge of it, or? Well, I'd always done it casually. I always knew that it was a great way to have a bit of a side hustle, a bit of a side income. Um, yeah. So I'd, I'd always done it, but it was just you know life priorities, I guess. You've got a full time <laughs> job and you've got so many commitments. It's like. I would do it on a Saturday or a Sunday on my weekend and it would just be, hey, you've made $50 or you know, $100 here and there. And yeah, that was really cool as a side income, but geez, your world just suddenly shifts when you realize you've just got to pack up and, and head back home. Yeah. And it was like, I'd already had a bit of experience, not a lot of experience, mm -hmm. but I'm like, what if you were to put it to scale? And what if you were to go and instead of buying two items, what if, what if you were to buy a hundred? Yeah. And then what if you bought 200? And it was like this, it's this evolution of thought process that, could this actually be a sustainable full-time job? And could being your own boss actually be, you know, something that is achievable? Yeah. Um, so these are the things that are, I guess been ticking over in my head for the last couple of months. And mm -hmm. it's not easy. I think you can <laughs> attest to that. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really enjoying the process of just really more so just growing, but learning every day because I'm the first to admit, I don't know it all and it is still new to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm using those past experiences to kind of help me out along the way. And I'm having some early success, which is kind of keeping me, you know, interested in continuing and not grabbing a part-time job somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like reselling is uh, you're constantly learning. There's always something new to learn or a new platform to learn. I, I don't know how many you have eBay and then I know you have Facebook marketplace. Do you have anything else you can sell on over there? There's a couple of local marketplace listings that you can utilize. Facebook's definitely the best from a, a local standpoint. I mm -hmm. personally just do eBay and Facebook. And mm -hmm. I'm a little bit unique over here in Australia and, and probably even the US as well, where I'm predominantly actually Facebook. I know you um, are. Like all of your videos are just Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. It's cool. Yeah. And I'm trying to, I guess, change the stigma around Facebook marketplace because I think yeah. a lot of people don't really focus their time and attention on that platform. Yeah. Um, I've got a lot of negativity towards it. I speak to a lot of people through Instagram and I speak to a lot of people locally here in Australia and everyone's sort of like, you know, there's so many, you know, people that kind of just stuff you around and, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, an ordeal, I guess, to get sales done through Facebook and a lot of low ball offers. 
Um, but there's zero fees on Facebook. I and know. You're not posting either. Like that coming to you. And if you don't want them to come to your house, they're coming to a street or two away from you. Yeah. Um, it's so much more in my mind effective, one on my wallet, but two on the convenience of them coming to me once I've been able to source and list the items. So I've been I've been slowly working more into eBay because I think it's important to have multiple platforms. And I know you sell on multiple platforms and mm -hmm. that works well for you. Um, I'm now starting to transition more into my eBay store and kind of have a bit of a 50-50 split. Right. Um, but the other thing which we can touch on a bit later is my number one focus um, has always been furniture, which is another unique thing. Yes, uh, I love that. I've, I've, try, I've dabbled a little bit here and there just like with, you know, my husband and I, we before it was Facebook Marketplace, there was Craigslist. I don't know if you know of it, yeah. but it's, yep. yeah, well, it's kind of scary sometimes, but, <laughs> uh, but we would, you know, find furniture on there and pick it up and then turn around and resell it on there. Um, nice. You know, before we were even into reselling just to make, you know, our money back or whatever. Um, but yeah, I know furniture is huge and that's where I go for now. Like if I can't find it at a local thrift store, um, I'm like, well, we'll just hop on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace would work as well. So it's it's look it's really high profit and it's really fast sales the sales cycle is a few days um on, I, you on, i mean you'll buy, you'll source on facebook marketplace and then if not the same day or next day you sell it and make profit that's crazy more that's often good. than not yeah. yeah so you know i'm big on my shoes i'm big on my clothes my brick or break my electronics so i always play in those different spaces because I, I really think as well as much as I'm focusing on furniture, if I'm going to do this full time, I've got to have a lot of different niches that I focus on mm -hmm. to just have a well-rounded knowledge of what sells well. Um, so that's one big thing is I would I would probably say about 50% of the money I earn is actually through furniture flipping alone. Yeah. And the other 50% comes out of everything else. So, you know, I, I don't want to completely rely on just one sort of niche category in furniture. I'd like to have sort of a play in a lot of different spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm do, I am trying to sort of develop those other areas. But geez, furniture, it's just like, I've been doing it for months. And it's it's like you say, it's within a couple of days, it's, you know, 100 to $200 profit per item. And you don't need to do a lot of work to it. You've just got to know, I guess, what you're looking for. You've got yeah. to know what that item is that you need to get your hands on. And then you've got to be quick. That's the yeah, other thing. That, yeah, that's the so thing you do. <laughs> Yeah. because people are doing the same thing because a lot of people that I've come to learn and even myself, I'm guilty of, I don't want to deal with it. We don't have a truck. We don't want to move it like, or a van or whatever. And we don't want to go take it to the thrift store. We'd rather somebody just come pick it up, like just 50 bucks, hundred bucks, whatever, gone buy out of my yeah. hair. And then that's where um, people that flip furniture come into play and they that's make money. So, I mean, it's, it, it works for everyone. Um, but you know, there's some people that um, you know, there's certain just categories they just won't touch because they don't want to have to ship it or pack it or whatever. But obviously furniture is purely local. Um, mm. So uh, do they sell um, a, like a lot of furniture at thrift stores there? Uh, they, they do. But so, funnily enough, even though I focus on it, I don't really buy from there. Yeah, um, yeah. I, you know, obviously any thrift store is a good place to negotiate and always get a lower price. But I often find that the furniture is at times cheaper on Facebook. Um, yeah, and it's, because of it's, that yeah and oh look I'm, I'm in I'm in thrift store I probably source maybe three or four times a week so I'm always out in the stores and having a look but I really kind of place my focus and priority around focusing on Facebook marketplace sourcing of furniture it's really the only place I buy it um, and then it's sort of a process for me where I'm allotting maybe two or three hours into sourcing furniture and then the minute I find a piece you just simply have to go yeah. So I'm in the car, I'm driving out, I'm collecting the item, bringing it back. And I kind of just allot a piece of time throughout my week and my days to go, right, we're going to focus on furniture on Facebook. Um, and there might not always be a piece there, but I'm always placing that time to focus on it. And if it does pop up in the thrift store, I will. But to be honest, I haven't really done it because I'm looking for, for certain pieces of furniture. Um, right. There's a couple of pieces of criteria that I need to sort of tick off. And having a look on Facebook allows me just the time, I guess, to sift through it and make sure I'm grabbing the right pieces. Because the last thing you want with furniture is to have 15. Oh, no. You can't store all that. <laughs> no, I, I, I really do think for anyone getting into furniture, firstly, I think you need to at least pay a bit of attention to furniture if you're not doing yeah. it at the moment. But I would really just go one at a time, just buy one piece, try, try and flip it, get a bit of an understanding. I've always sort of said to go into a furniture store in your local area. And just yeah. ask what's what's going out the door like what what type of furniture you know what That's item cool. of furniture 
um, what's selling well for you? And then what's your retail price? And then I'd then jump onto Facebook and try and look for it at 80% reduced price yeah. and then try and find a middle ground. So could you um, um, give an example of like a good price range for a certain piece of, like if you're looking for a, uh, I don't know if you call them dressers, but like in, in a bedroom. Yeah. Okay. So like for a dresser, like if you were going to pick up one of those for a bedroom, what is the price that you're looking for? And then what would you sell it for? Well, it's a really cool example, actually, that you've come up with the dresser because that's one that I do quite a lot of. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that sort of kid's dresser room table. It's got that mirror with the arch. Yeah. Um, it's got the little seat, the, you know, that white type setup. Mm-hmm. They go like hotcakes. I and know. <laughs> if you can find those on Facebook Marketplace around about the $50 mark, I'm turning them into about $150 to $200. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, if I'm making less than $100 in profit, I'm disappointed. Because, oh. <laughs> like any, because because you can just get such great results with it. Um, yeah. So I'd, I'd, depending on the piece and the condition that it's in, I'd, I'd generally list it about 195 back on Facebook Marketplace, and it would generally get snapped up within a couple of days. It's um, if you know, like you say, if you know that piece of furniture well, and you know the, the the history of its selling on Marketplace, and that's only done through time, you start to look for them, and you try and negotiate a seventy dollar listing down to fifty. And yeah. that's your first twenty dollars in your pocket, and then you're relisting within a few days for, you know, upwards of two hundred. But bedside tables is probably the, the biggest one that I get into. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's it's great for those that are starting out, and, and like you say, don't have the vehicle to go and collect because they're more lightweight. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a bit more convenient rather than the big, you know, large piece of furniture. <laughs> and I've I've started with those, and they sell better than anything to bedside tables. They'd probably be my number one piece of furniture. Um, okay. So again, buy it around the $50 mark. Make sure it sort of fits what's in your area as a you know, really well-selling piece of furniture. There's no damage to it. Give it a quick clean, give it a bit of a polish and they sell for $150 on average, pretty comfortably. So For, again, for a pair uh, of them? For like- Always for like, a pair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've bought a couple of um, standalone bedside tables and they- do eventually sell, but they just don't sell for as much. As quick, yeah. Yeah, not as quick. And, and yeah, obviously half the price is buying a set. So I'll always look for the set, but yeah, furniture, it's, um, it's yeah. over my eye. Really yeah, yeah, that's smart. I mean, I totally would. Like if we had like a truck or a van, I mean, I'd have to lug my husband along as well because I can't lift half that stuff by myself, but we make a good team whenever we, cause we have to move a lot cause he's military. Um, but right. you know, we can, we can, between the both of us, we, we weight lift so we can get it, <laughs> but I can't do it by myself. I could probably lift a, a bedside table, but that's about it. Um, yeah. but that's maybe that's the first piece. Have a look for the bedsides. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I need to. I, I always take a peek, but like at our thrift stores is like always from like 60s, 70s, but not the cute 60s or 70s kind of pieces. Uh, <laughs> just like the really you know though, ones. Right? I think a lot of people would go, I want to get into furniture. I'll just go to the thrift store and buy the first piece. And you can really get caught out if you're, if you're doing it like that. You've got to just kind of have a bit of info and knowledge before you get into it. And yeah. that's what I sort of say, just buy that one piece and just test it out and see how it goes before you, you know, buy a heap of them. Oh yeah, I know. Cause then you'll be, <laughs> you'll be out of space a lot quicker than what you think. Um, I think a, a good way to know what to pick up too, is just to like, I, I'm sure on typical social media, people have, um, you know, their, their dream bedrooms or their dream living rooms. Um, but on Pinterest is really great as well. Um, just to see what's trending right now and just looking up 2020 furniture or something like that, just to get ideas. Um, and then I feel like almost creating like a, a collage of, um, the types of styles and stuff would be really helpful for somebody that's like starting out with furniture and stuff and trying to get into the groove of knowing what to pick up. I think that's an awesome idea. And I personally haven't used Pinterest, but I think Pinterest is probably one of the greatest spots that you could check out because you just know what's popular, you know what's trending. Um, it's that idea of going into a furniture store. You can just simply do it online and see what people are into. Um, I might actually start to do that. It's a really good idea. There you go. And that could be a video idea. You could um, use that as like, you know, yeah. how I use Pinterest to- I'm always um, looking for video ideas. Resell furniture. Yeah, I know. I try to give them out as much as I can um, because I know sometimes um, people get into like a creative funk, right? And, um, but I feel like I'm always, I have like a whole word document, like a hundred different video ideas. And I'm like, I only do three a week. I don't know how I'm going to get through all of these. 
So you sit and brainstorm, do you, and put some time into thinking about ideas or they just come to you and you whack them in your phone or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I'll, when I'm at the gym, like when I got like the adrenaline going and I have yeah. good music going and um, I'm just like, oh, I could totally see this video and like this cool production that I'm totally, my skills are not there yet, but I'm like one of these days it'll be there. I reckon your skills, have, they've, they've picked up a lot over, over the journey. You've, um, I think you're up to, I saw about 60 videos or something now and yeah. When you first start out, I know my first video was terrible. I'd like to oh, it was <laughs> but yeah, it's ridiculous. It's um it's time and it's effort with YouTube, but I think it certainly pays off. Yeah, yeah. So um speaking about YouTube, how did you get into it? What did you I mean, why did you want to start creating videos? And obviously I think it's all been about like your reseller journey, which you just recently got on because of the pandemic. So could you just talk yeah. about how you got into YouTube a bit? Well, I got into YouTube because I, I firstly realized that reselling is a great tool that literally anyone can get into. And mm. with the pandemic that's going on, I think a lot of people are out, out of work and, you know, they're, they're finding it really difficult. And I've sort of just stumbled across reselling of something that I'd done previously. But I figured if I put videos out and I really wanted to market videos towards people that were brand new and people that didn't do a lot of reselling in the past or they just had heard about it and they wanted to learn about how to actually do it properly, yeah. Um, and while I'm still fairly new in the process, I, I thought to myself, you've got the really good background of sales knowledge and like the psychology of sales, which I think is very important in very reselling. Smart. Yeah. Um, and I reckon I could adapt that into a video talking about my journey of being a new reseller who I'm trying to speak to. And then they can watch me grow and hopefully through my influence, they can grow themselves. And yeah. just that opportunity to, I guess, help people out there that are new to reselling. I really want to reach out and help you as much as i'm trying to help myself at the moment yes um because through talking on instagram which i try and do a lot is um you know follow people that are into reselling and they follow it and i ask some questions and they all say to me i'm new to it i just want to get started i'm just getting into it i don't know much about ebay don't know much about poshmark macari where should i sell and i'm like well if the volume is out there for people that don't know too much about this space this youtube channel i think could be a really cool thing to get into and actually you know focus on trying to help people yeah um and then the feedback over the last three months has really i guess motivated me to keep making videos i do what you do and i do about three videos every single week i know you do a really good job i can't comment on all of them but i i watch them they're good yeah i, I look i think the biggest thing with youtube and, and youtube growth is you, you the number one thing as much as your content quality needs to be somewhere thereabouts you've just got to do the discipline of posting when you say you're going to post yeah consistency. Um, I think that's the only way to do it. It also gets the people that are watching you, I guess, aware that, hey, this guy's, you know, he's genuinely trying to help and he's actually not just doing this sort of whenever he can. He's, he's, yeah. he's proper about it. Um, and I think my my growth and uh, to be honest, I actually, I, I do look at your channel because oh. you're, you, I think you're about two months before I started. Oh, was I? Nothing. When did you yeah. start? July? I started early July. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've kind of looked at your channel as a bit of a, like hopefully my future projection, if that makes it sense. It will be, it um, will be because you offer a really, you offer a lot of good knowledge. And that's what I think too. Like some people are like, I don't think I would be interesting enough for YouTube or I don't know what I would talk about. People have already done what solds and and um, um, thrift hauls and thrift with me's. But the thing is, is everybody's different. Nobody's like you and nobody's like me and nobody can um, tell a story in the way that we can or um, present that information in a way that other people might be, be able to understand it better. So I feel like- absolutely everybody has a valid voice and should make videos. I mean, it just makes our community that much better worldwide, even like, I feel like people, I mean, just because you're in Australia doesn't make any of your knowledge less valid. Like all that Facebook marketplace stuff, pick up furniture here, people like in the U S like it is popping. Like it is the place to be and eBay too. Like what I'm glad that you're doing eBay now, because that puts you on um, a world stage at that point, all of your items. So yeah. um, are you, are you mainly eBay or are you more Poshmark Macari? Cause I know you're pretty much with your monthly sales. You're kind of just split evenly. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm about even uh, like a third across the board on each. So for a few months, eBay was taking the lead. Um, but I guess whenever they started doing their managed payment stuff yeah. going on, um, something happened in the algorithm and it kind of tanked a little bit. Um, it tanked on everyone, hey? Yeah. And then, but now Poshmark is like crazy. I think now I'm just understanding the algorithm a little bit more with them. And the only thing that I do regarding Poshmark is I list, I share, and then like I comment back to people that buy for me and stuff. Um, but a lot of people can, it's more of like a social platform. So people will get caught up in 
following other people or sharing other people's items when that does nothing to benefit them at all. Um, so very different to eBay and yet still similar sales results. I suppose it's just knowing the platform, right? And then adapting yeah. to utilizing it its best way. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, it's fun because I feel like I tell you, I'm like, I could be a professional student. I enjoy learning um, and figuring out how things work and why they work, which, um, you know, I, I could contribute to my YouTube success as well um, because I, I, I've treated it like a business, but then I also have treated it like this long-term research project. And I'm just like consuming all the information. I'm like, how can I make this work while also still providing obviously free educational and somewhat entertaining content? I would like to think, um, you know, providing value in my own way and how I, you know, my perspective of reselling and how I view it and why it works for me and stuff like that. It's, it's so important. I think channels like yours, channels like mine, mm. um, like you say, you can be the same, but still very different at the same time. Exactly. And I, think, I think anyone out there looking to jump into a YouTube channel, I looked at it like now is no better time to do it. I'd always wanted to do a YouTube channel. Exactly, me too. I was like, I, I, was, I, was, I can't, like I said before, like life's in the way, you've got so many different priorities, you get into a rhythm. I think so many yeah. people have benefited in a way in a really tough time from breaking rhythm. Yes, um, agree. Because I've certainly... I look at it like I said to you before, I was in the sporting industry for 10 years and I was so one-eyed focused on that's all I was ever going to do. Like there, yeah. was, there was nothing more to do. I was going to turn 65, 70, retire. Um, yeah. And that was my life. And then, and then 2020 hits. Everything changes. It's been a year. Like my, it was, it was, I mean, it is for everybody. It's, it's just a tough year, but I was I know. in my personal world, a 180 where everything kind of just immediately changed. And yeah. I think a lot of people in those times can really obviously battle. And I think that, you know, mental health and everything like that at the moment is really difficult. It's, yeah. it's just a tough time for everybody. But I think for certain people out there, it can actually be, you know, Beneficial. when you look at it three, four, five years down the line, it can actually be the best year of your life in a really tough way. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to make what I'm doing with reselling and YouTube and everything else, while it's all in its infancy and it's all very early days, I want to look back at 2020 and go, geez, I'm so glad I put in all the hard work and effort to try and establish something because now in 2023, things are going great. So yeah, I think it's really important for anyone out there just have that positive mentality on anything that you're doing. Get into YouTube if you aren't because it's a great time to be, to be getting into it. Yeah, um, And reselling is a great way to make some money if you're, if you're not making money at the moment due to obviously what's going on in the world. Exactly. Anybody, like what you were saying earlier, anybody could do this, whether you intend to um, make it a job or keep it a part of your life for um, a long time or for the short time. Like it's just a good way to get, make, you know, some quick cash, um, especially mm -hmm. with, if you're just starting off with stuff around your house or um, just finding a few odds and ends at a thrift store. I, I think this year has been um, I mean, it's been horrific in so many ways for everyone across the entire world. Um, I feel like the pandemic completely, um, <laughs> I mean, it's not funny at all, but I mean, the pandemic completely wiped over the fact that Australia had like some of the worst fires like in history um, earlier this year. Um, and then the pandemic happened and then, um, you know, there's natural disasters going on all the time here in America, like especially out on the West Coast and Mm. the election everything it's all crazy all the world is in crazy. there's always a news story i tell you what they put a lot of us-based news stories over here in australia we i know they do feel we, like went we, to, are there. we went to new zealand um for a, an entire month after i graduated with my undergrad um because i just the it's just beautiful we wanted to do australia and new zealand but our budget could only afford new zealand so i'm like well Aust we we're gonna need a whole other month for australia yeah. um but um, when we went to New Zealand, I was baffled at how the only thing on the news, there's one channel, like one local station when we were at the gym for the local news and everything else was like worldwide news or US news. And I'm like, yeah. I don't think Americans know how big of a, <laughs> of, of a, you know, worldwide stage that we're on. And oh, sometimes yeah. we are a big mockery as well. <laughs> <laughs> But it's entertaining. That's, it's entertaining, that's for sure. You, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, we won't talk about that though. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. No, that doesn't have anything to do with reselling. But yeah. anyway, so what made you decide to make the leap into eBay? Um, to get into eBay, well, I mean, I don't think Facebook, if you're just going to say I'm a full time Facebook reseller, I think you're going to fall off and, and not have the success that you could possibly have if you looked at multiple different avenues to list your items. Um, 
I think eBay, there was a reluctancy for me to get into eBay because of the fees associated. Um, you know, I've, I've looked at a Facebook and I've seen the sales that I've got through that and it's zero dollars. Yeah. And then I go to, to what is about 15, sometimes 20% with relistings um, of fees. And I don't, I'm almost at a point now that I've done it for a few months. I'm almost like, I don't have a choice. I can't, I can't just keep saying I don't want to do it because yeah. you kind of get forced into doing it if you want to get any sales sort of results. So mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of just been, been that acceptance over the last few months. And look, most people here in Australia, they do use eBay as their main sales platform. And oh, good. Op opening a store is, is obviously a, you know, the thing to do. Um, Facebook Marketplace isn't something that many people do, and it's, it is more eBay. The, the people that I speak to in the reselling community, community here in Australia, they are eBay only. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm kind sense. of trying to... Yeah, I'm trying to look at Facebook as just, I guess, my uniqueness and trying to help people out and maybe looking to jump onto there. Yeah. Um, but now it's really a case of like, how many items do you, do you source to hit the sales number goals that you want to hit? And I, I think with YouTube, I think with reselling, a really cru uh, crucial key aspect is to set goals. Um, yes. I, I think I personally do it and it keeps me motivated. I know what I want at the end of the month from a sales perspective. Um, I know what I'd like to achieve on a subscriber and a viewership and a video upload perspective mm -hmm. on YouTube. Yep. Um, and those sort of mini monthly goals are, are attacking my, my yearly goals that I've also got in place now as well. So I think if I didn't have the monthly and the yearly goals, I would, you know, who knows what I'd be doing. I could be unmotivated and, you know, I might, might have just completely stopped. But I think having that motivation of, oh, you've, you've achieved another milestone, you've got to the next point. Um, it can be even down to, I'm going to list, you know, 10 items a day for the entire week and have 70 up on my eBay store. That could be a really cool goal. That's really good. Yeah. I, I just think any goal that you could possibly set yourself, even on a weekly, even on a daily, um, is going to really help you out. And it certainly helped me getting into eBay and continuing yeah. with Facebook. And it's obviously helped my, um, my sales results sort of maintain. Um, I don't really deviate too much up and down, which is quite strange, I think, in a sales nature that you would normally mm -hmm. see your ebbs and flows. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I do, as, as part of my YouTube, uh, a what sold video every single Sunday afternoon that mm -hmm. will give you the true figures and facts that I know a lot of people will do on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. but I just do it every single Sunday and I, yeah. I give you my 10 best sold items. And then I give you what, what the numbers look like, cost of goods, profit, um, yep. total sales yeah. results and my, my profit margin. Which I think is important. I, I'm glad that you're so transparent with that as well, um, because I mean it's good. I, I think I think the the cost of items and cost of goods are pretty similar. Obviously, the exchange rate is different, but I think it's pretty similar over there as well. Yeah. But I mean, it gives people a good idea of you know, okay, if he picked up something for ten bucks or whatever, and I could pick it up for even cheaper, and he sold it for this, then I know I can make you know an even larger profit margin. So. I think Absolutely. it's just important to do that. I wish, I wish I could do what solds every week, but it's just, it's a little too much. I think I could probably manage every other week, but it's just, I just have a lot going on. So I'm like, uh, I would like to. I, I, I do the what solds to obviously help people out there find the same item, make the same profit. Yeah. That's what I always say. That's why I do it. But on the other hand, it's also an accountability thing for me as well. True. And Keeping. It's, it's like, all right, well, you're going to put a video out on Sunday. Let's make it the best video it can be and make as many sales as you could possibly make to yeah. bring the viewer some awesome results. So, you know, I, I understand the process of, you know, I've got another what sold. It pops up every single Sunday. But people love me, them, though. Like, They're good. They're, they do really well. They do. And a lot of viewership. It's the one that I'll actually promote the most through Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. um, I do, I try to market my YouTube channel and try and communicate it out to as many people as possible because I feel like that's obviously why we're, why we're doing it. We want to reach as many as we can. Mm -hmm. um, that What Soul video is the one every Sunday I'll push to all the groups I'm a part of. And then the Tuesday and the Thursday, I'll kind of just let that, you know, fall where it may on a viewership perspective. But um, I think from having sort of three different styles of video that obviously change in the way they're presented each week, but ultimately they're the same style of video. Yeah. Viewers are now knowing that, look, on a Tuesday, there'll be some hints, tips and tricks. On a Thursday, there'll be a day in the life where I go out and you can come thrift with me. Yep. And then on Sunday, I'll tell you what the results were of that. So yeah, um, I think having that sort of structure and knowing these are the days and these are the styles of videos, yeah. as a creator, I think you're in a, a much better position to be able to sort of maintain the discipline of uploading it because you kind of just know, well, that's what I do on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, accountability. It's YouTube as much as it is for everyone else. It's it's accountability for me and the business yeah. that I'm running. Hopefully people are enjoying my growth as much as it's potentially helping them out there too. Yeah, I know you've been growing pretty well too. I've been watching it. You're almost at what, 700 subscribers, right? I don't know if I checked yeah. the last few days. Almost 650 at the moment. 650? Um, I thought it was almost 700. Well, maybe by the end of this video, you'll have 700. By the time this goes, it'll go out later, later in the end of this week. But I, I agree. I think uh, structure is important with YouTube. Like just having your viewers know exactly what they can expect from you. Um, and then just consistency. I, um, I mean, I think it's fine to like branch off and do a different idea here and there, but at the end of the day, um, you know, it's good for people to know what to expect from you. Yeah. With YouTube, I, yeah. So I do like, I did two times a week for, I don't know, two or three months. And then the last two months I, I stepped it up and did three times a week, but it's been easier being able to do these reseller hangouts because, um, even though they're long, they're usually like an hour long, if not more sometimes, um, even though they're longer, it actually takes less time to edit because it's just, you know, editing out like a few little mistakes here and there. Whereas like with my other videos, it's very more, it's more creative. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Creative. And it just, it takes more focus, I guess, yeah. and, and thinking about exactly what I want to do with it. Um, but it's not, it's not, you know, essential to be able to do all of that, but I, I like, where am I going with this? I like change. I, I, I guess I, I do something different every week. Um, yeah, you do. So and I, I suppose that obviously helps you with the sense that you've got such a backlog of ideas. Yeah. Where I, I really, I tell you one thing that I battle with, and you might too, with, with the, the reselling side and the YouTube side is where do you place your focus? Like really like week to week. Are you, obviously you've got these goals to grow YouTube, but you're also trying to technically grow a business as well on one side. And yeah. The business itself is actually making the money week to week, you know, now, but I, I look at the monetization side of things with YouTube and I think, well, if I, I kind of have to put in the three videos a week to kind of yeah. get that, get that ball rolling. It's a time investment. It really is. I've said it time and time again, but like, I, like, I think you're coming at it from a business aspect of it as well. Obviously you're here to help people and to provide value for other resellers, new resellers, people trying to get into it. Um, but at the end of the day, like it is your time and your time is worth something and you do have something valuable to say. So I think all of us are wanting to get to that point of monetization and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah. it is totally a time investment. And I feel like a lot of people um, don't realize that when they first start out, I think on average, based on my research, it takes somebody anywhere from like a year to 18 months to get monetized on YouTube on the, on yeah. average, but that's not people like well, that, but most if people I are not, <laughs> thank you, but most people aren't consistent. So I think that's where you're going to be able to shoot up here in the next few months is because you're consistent and people know what to expect from you. And you just have a very likable personality. So like those okay. three combinations and you engage really well and engagement is, is, um, very important in YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, that's, you know, you even have an advantage there is you're able to market your videos like on, um, social media. I yep. didn't have social media. So the only way for me to, I, yeah, yeah. I, my husband and I got rid of it. Like typical social media, obviously YouTube is like a newer social yeah. media. Are you still so, in that position now? Sorry. You're still no Instagram, no Facebook. No, anything? we've gotten rid of it. We well, got rid of it done. in 2016 and we're never going back. No Facebook, wow. no Instagram, no Twitter, no Snapchat, no nothing. Just YouTube. What no. a world. Yeah. How do you, how do you get through? <laughs> But my point is, is like, I'm sure there's other people out there that are like, well, I don't have this or I don't have a following on Instagram. I know some people are smaller or they don't have one or they don't want to have one or they want to get off of it, but they also want to make YouTube like a business because they feel like they have a good voice to share. Um, it is possible. It is doable. You just have to put yourself out there in the, in the idea of YouTube. So my take on it was that I know people feel a sense of community with Instagram. What if I took that comment and engagement and brought it over to YouTube because I didn't see it very much in the reseller niche. So I'm like, well, how am I going to market myself? People don't know I, I exist. I'm a little pebble at the bottle at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. So, you know, I would find other smaller creators and watch their videos and leave them a genuine comment and engage, make sure um, to like it and the comment and to, subs and to subscribe. And um, when you're starting off, it's good to have your public um, subscriptions on. So that way the other YouTuber 
yeah, yeah. is notified when you subscribe. Yeah, that's well. actually a pretty good idea. So you you put a bit of time into marketing through YouTube comments on other on other accounts, basically to kind of just get your name out there, say hey, I'm in this too type thing. Um, because I, I I think I know a lot of people with channels. They I don't know if they just don't like the fact of promoting their own thing. Um, whether or not people aren't comfortable with that. Yeah. Um. I oh, look. I, I just think if you're going to go to all that effort, you're going to want to get as many people to hopefully benefit from it as possible. And I think exactly what you're doing through YouTube is pretty much what I'm exactly doing through Instagram and Facebook. I yeah. probably don't do it through YouTube because I am doing it through those other platforms. You should do it on YouTube. You'll be yeah, able to, yeah. You'll, you'll be able to get get to your goal of monetization a whole lot quicker. I've realized a lot of people don't leave genuine comments. Like a lot of people will just say. You know, even if they're trying to market their YouTube channel, they'll, they'll just be like, hey, I have a YouTube channel as well. Come subscribe to me, sub for sub yeah. or whatever. Um, but I feel like actually showing that you watch the video, like, and you'll know when people watch your video because they'll yeah. make a comment about something you said or something you sold or um, even give you constructive criticism. Um, which I invite as long as people aren't rude. <laughs> if you're rude, then you get removed. But um, yeah. but I, I invite conversation because I think it's good to disagree or agree to disagree or just to see things in a different perspective. I think that's the only way for people to grow. And, you know, I mean, it's just good uh, manners, I guess. I don't know. Um, but with YouTube, yeah, I would find other small people. So I would just like go to the search bar and type in reseller or reselling and sort by the most recent up, um, uploaded video and see who didn't have very many views because I was also that person without many views and just going out of your way to give somebody a like and let them know that you liked it and that you subscribed and you're looking forward to more of their videos. And if it's coming from a genuine place, um, yeah. then a lot of people are receptive to that and then want to come and subscribe to you and support you as well. Um, and then that's how I've made so many friends here on YouTube too, is that back and forth. And it's like that genuine connection. I, I actually think that's how we met is through you, I think, commenting on one of my videos. I think that was sort of the way it all came Probably. Down. Right. <laughs> I can't remember now. <laughs> I, I, I generally think it was because I remember it was around that 400 sub mark for you and I obviously subbed you and, and then have you know, followed you ever since. So proofs right there, you know, it does work. Um, so I might have to pay a bit more attention and actually, you know, I, I mean, I do do it, but I, I don't, I don't do it from a, my own personal growth perspective, if that makes sense. I'll, I'll, I'll do it to engage because I love their videos, but I'm not thinking around the mindset that it might grow my channel. Yeah. And, um, and a good way to do it too, is just to kind of let them know tastefully that you also do YouTube videos. Like in the beginning, I would just be like, Hey, like I, I enjoy what you're doing um, because I do think it's important for all of us in the reseller community to talk about it and to have conversations about what we're doing because that's how we grow. Um, you know, I recently just started my channel as well. Um, and don't write out YouTube because then YouTube blocks your comment. You have to write out YT. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I've learned that. Um, so, you know, I just like, you know, I also have a, a YouTube channel, YT. Um, um, I just recently started, or I, I just did a whatever video on it. I had a hard time with sourcing at Goodwill this week. I don't, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I would oh, actually no. write it. I didn't sound like a robot. I didn't just say yeah. first or nice video. Like it was just something substantial. Yep. Um, and, and that's the only way that I could market myself is just being present. Um, and mm -hmm. by doing that, so I would do it a lot with the smaller community because that's what I am a part of and I still am and I still uh, will always be a part of because I, I don't think that once you hit a certain tier, you're, you're, uh, you're only valid and nobody else is valid. I hate that. I hate that concept. I think everybody is valid and, um, you know, we all start from somewhere. So it's always, it's kind of sad when people, when they get to a certain level and they, you know, well, I think it. I think people are almost um, predicting the number to the, the relevance of that person, which is a really bad thing to do. Yeah. Um, you know, your idea of going through YouTube is my idea of going through Instagram, and I'll I'll speak to people with two followers, but they're they're a human being, and they've got a heap of stories and a heap of you know, um, exactly. you know good conversations. So I really don't think you should be sort of aligning yourself to any sort of group of people. But yeah. certainly, if you're trying to put your name out to other smaller creators on YouTube, that's a really good thing because. I know, and I still know to this very day, every single comment that I get is just, it, it makes it worthwhile and it makes it worth doing. Mm -hmm. um, as long as they aren't the, the negative type of comments that you can often, you know, one or two at a time isn't, isn't great. But um, yeah, I think if anyone's communicating with you, it shows that, you know, there are eyes out there and they are watching you and they are getting value from it. Um, mm -hmm. It just motivates you to make that next video because 
you know, it is like you say, there is a lot of time. And I've really, I guess my battle with reselling has been, I've got a 50-50 focus on both sides of the coin. And yep, same. I just, I don't know if I'm giving enough time to building my reselling as much as I'm giving to, to YouTube. And I don't know what the right split is. So I was curious for you with three videos a week as well, are you putting out, you know, time and effort into YouTube? Have you got the balance right, basically, in your own head? Like, do you mm. think I'm giving as much to what I want out of YouTube as much as I'm giving to, to the reselling side of things? Sure. So I would say, um, so I have been saying for that YouTube has been a time investment. Um, so I'm not getting paid. Well, actually, now I am getting paid for YouTube, which is really nice. But for five and a half months, it's a time investment. I was making no money with YouTube. Um, I was you know, I just had my reselling income. Thankfully, we're in a good position where we don't need my income. My husband cool. and I, you know, we have our military income and we know how to save off of that alone. Um, and That's so everything cool. else is just icing on the cake. Um, so we're able to save and set ourselves up for retirement. We're just lucky and blessed to be in that position. Um, awesome. So thankfully, I have been in the position to take as much time as I need on certain things or other things. Um, so I would say on average, since I started YouTube, honestly, it's been 20 hours a week for YouTube, 20 hours a week for reselling. Um, yep. And I feel like I plateau, I've been plateauing about anywhere from like $1,100 to $1,500 net profit every month um, yep. because of that split. So I'm working a full-time job, but I'm only ha I only have like part-time hours. So if I was a full-time reseller, like purely 40 hours or more a week, then that number would have been easily doubled, if not you know, more than that, maybe even tripled, who knows? Yeah. But I have always wanted to do YouTube. I've always wanted, wanted to pursue like videography and video editing. And, um, just the allure of YouTube is just fascinating to me. And then building that sense of community, which I realized I've needed, especially because of this pandemic and the fact that reselling is just a lonely job in and of itself, because we don't have coworkers. So you can't even like, you know, shoot the crap all day. Have you battled with that? Um, not bad because I've been doing the reseller hangouts. I do like one or two a week and, and it's nice. And um, I found a few, I guess they're my girlfriends now. Um, I, I've found people that I like really vibe with. Like, you know, those people like that, like your chemistry just works as friends and stuff. And um, yeah. we just, we chat all the time. So like, it's, I've loved YouTube because you can find those people like that. And like, it's, it's weird putting yourself out there sometimes and like, you know, dropping hints like, Hey, I also do YouTube videos or doing this, like, but there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're not doing it distastefully and you're doing it, you know, to benefit each other. Um, yeah. then I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, but I do think reaching out and building the community. So like, even for you, like if you were to reach out to other Aussie resellers, um, mm -hmm. and do reseller hangouts or, I mean, cause this is free. Like it's just a zoom recorded meeting. Um, yeah. it's just, and it's a good way to get watch hours as well. I feel like reseller oh. hangouts have really helped my watch hours because oh. people will put it on the background. It's like that, that TV noise for people. So they'll, yeah, yeah. they'll come in and out of the conversation, but like while they're listing or doing pictures, people enjoy it. So I end up getting a lot of like, even if it's just 50 people listening to an hour long hangout, like it's 50 hours in a day. So Pretty it, good it adds up. So I feel like I, that's something with my channel is I've tried to balance the different types of audience members because there's certain people that like quick videos and to the point, and there's other people that like long winded chatty videos. So I'm like, and I I'm both of those people too. It's weird. I'm like, sometimes I, you know, want to hear it quick to the point, please tell me what all the information is. And then the yeah. other times I like hearing what other people will have to say and talking about it and like learning the psychology behind people. It's a very interesting thought because I've always looked at the blueprint as being sort of 10 to 15 minutes is a really good time frame for a video. For most, and yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know, just on the research that I've done, but I do know that lives, uh, I, I don't know if you've done a, an actual live. Um, Not you know, yet. I mess up all I, the time. <laughs> yeah. I, see, I think that's cool because you get the actual engagement right there and then. Yeah. Um, and I was on a live um, with one of the Aussie resellers about a week or two ago. And, you know, it was just that there was a chat right on the right hand side of the screen and we're, we're talking, but we're engaging with, you know, 50 or 60 people in on the live. And, and we just basically, you can grab, I don't know if you've been on a yeah, live, yeah. you can grab a comment and, you know, it's, it's everyone's sort of really actually all in there together. And, you know, people are just chatting away crazy. So 
I, I think if I'm going to get into it, I'm going to either do the hangout yeah. style that you're doing or that live type version. You um, should. I think it'd be yeah. good for you too to, because you really enjoy talking and getting to know why people are the way that they are. And I feel like you yeah. would do really well with that. Yeah, it's definitely um, the way you've been doing it. I've definitely looked at it as being sort of a really cool idea to sort of structure your, your videos each week. And like you say as well, you can just like quickly edit it and you don't need to put too much time into it. Um, because I'm always tediously at night, I'll, I'll try and go out and list in the morning and source in the morning. And then it will be maybe capturing some footage of whatever that was and yeah. then sitting up all night and trying to critique it. Yeah. And I, I probably just need to chill out a little bit and not try and put so much time and effort into it. But I know quality is important, but yeah, yeah it's, it's getting back to that point around the split. I'm, I'm trying to put more time into the reselling side of things and grow the business but also try and tick off that three videos a week. But I'm probably 15 hours on YouTube. It's probably about five hours per video. Um, yeah. And then I would say I'm probably doing, the last couple of months, I've probably been doing about 40 hours of reselling. So after hours in the morning, you know, everything like that. So I'd say it's been about a 65 to 70 hour work week for the last two yeah. months. But I would say that the sales results have been steady and on a monthly basis, I've done about, I mean, Aussie dollars, but I've done about five and a half grand in the first month and now the second month as well. So and gross or net? That, that's completely gross, gross okay. sale. Um, sort of net when you take literally everything out. Um, I think I had about 3,100. Oh net. yeah, that sounds about right. Um, yeah, so you know, three, one, I'm, I'm on track to do that again. And, and in Aussie dollars, I look at it on a salary front. So yeah. that monthly salary, what, what would that be if you did it every single month for a year? And I think I'm at around Australian dollars of about low 40s, about 42,000 a year. That's about um, average, right? Yeah. Uh, over here in Australia, having, having lived in Canada and, and I guess being a part of you know, their pay structure and, and everything over there, you get paid quite a bit more here in Australia. And a okay. lot of the reason why I actually came back to Australia was for the pay. Um, and I was, I was earning almost double in my full-time job before I stepped away into reselling. And mm. I'm only two months in, there's a lot of time to grow and learn and build. Oh, yeah. but, you know, I've fallen from what was double to now just half at around that 82, uh, around that 42 mark. Um, but my, my journey, my what solds and my monthly reviews, I'm, I'm telling everybody that I want to get to 50,000 a year as an annual mm -hmm. salary consistently. You can do that. Um, and I think that's possible considering the first month full time has already hit 42. Um, I've just got to try and hopefully build over the Christmas period, November, December, I reckon yeah. could be a time. And I'm kind of nervous about going into that because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, I yeah. want to make sure I'm buying the right things. Yeah, but uh, I think that could be a really cool month of you know increase in sales. Um, but yeah, from a from a financials point of view, it's like okay, that split of time, YouTube's not giving you anything. You need to go and earn it. You want to get both, so I'm just trying to do you know 60, 70 work hours each week, and and hopefully that kind of pays off in the long run, which I'm sure it will. Yeah, it sure will. With the way that you're trying to grow, like reselling, and obviously the time investment into YouTube. And obviously that's a passion for you as well. Have you considered like maybe doing your what solds, like prepping it, like writing it out and then like doing that as a live and then like, yeah, that's it, a cool idea. And then that's you won't have cool. to edit it. Like you just, you know, you hash out like your, your outline of, you know, the numbers that you need to report on. Cause I'm sure you do that anyway for your videos. You have to, that's like a very mem not memorized, but you probably have a, written out I look, I look at it every day so it's just a case of just putting a graph up and and we're done yeah, so but, but you could yeah. save i mean five hours typically per video and then maybe just an hour live that way um obviously you're getting like even if 10 or 15 people come and watch that whole hour you're already guaranteed those 15 hours and you're saving four hours a week um you know by having yeah. that as a live and then maybe using an, another hour or two to reply to comments or go and look for other smaller resellers or get in, into the community, let them know that you're watching and like market yeah. yourself a little bit more on YouTube. I feel like you, if you did that a little bit more, like to spend an hour or two a week working on that smaller, small YouTube, but also this is another hack. Um, I don't know if a hack is the right word, but even bigger resellers, if you turn on their bell notification and like you're there as soon as they post their video and like you leave 
you know, you watch maybe five, six minutes in, you'll still be one of the first comments and you leave a genuine comment and then just do like a little, bring it back to how like you also have a channel or like, oh, no way. Like, that's cool that you had that sell. I sold this this week. It was in my what sold video. And just having that people might read that and be like, oh, cool. He has another what sold. I love what sold. And then they'll come and click on your channel um, and want to subscribe to you. So that's a really good idea. Look, I, I definitely need to pay more attention to having an influence on YouTube in those comments. Um, and I think I definitely need to get onto lives. And I, I think that what's sold on a Sunday could be a very easy way of adapting to it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it might, it might be something that I'd definitely change up because you're right, that would save a good four hours. Um, and even if I'm not putting it back into YouTube, I'm just enjoying it. So I do it on a Sunday too, right? So, yeah. You know, like the last thing you good. want to be doing between 12 and five is doing a YouTube video, but that's what I do every single Sunday afternoon. So I um, I really enjoy the Friday and the Saturday because I don't do any videos. And yeah. I'm the way I, I sort of create and upload is I do it all in one day. Mm-hmm. So I go out and thrift and then I come back and then I edit and then I upload and it becomes like a 12 hour day. So yeah, it's long. I really kind of, ch- yeah, I cherish those days where it's like, it's not a YouTube day. Same. But I still, I still, in, in a weird way, still love to do it. It's exactly. Just a, it's a love, it's a love hate relationship. I, I mean, I agree. I am like, I'm going to get ahead this week. I'm going to film all my videos and I am kind of getting ahead with our reseller hangout. And then I had another one earlier. Um, and, and then I have my haul that I need to finish editing tonight and then tomorrow and then get that out tomorrow. But I'm like, I like your thrifting, the thrifting with us style where you, you know, you take the camera out and you do the voiceover. Like mm-hmm. I actually, I think a lot of people, like that's what people do. They're, they're yeah. watching your channel because they love to see you in the field and, oh, yeah, I, you. and showing excitement. Oh my God, I found this. Like that's what people I think love the most. Yeah. Um, and I think, that, I think the, some of the really good channels I've seen on YouTube really just focus on just that. That's all they do. You I know. know. It's like the bread and butter. Like, and I'm always, I mean, I know that they do well, but I'm always blown away when they do well for me. And I'm like, I, why do I put these off? I don't know. Because I feel like, I mean, I, in my own way, they're still creative. They're still different, but I'm like, oh, they're such a bread and butter. Like everybody does them. Who's going to want to watch mine, but they do, they do like to watch them. And I yeah. get that because I'm also like that as a viewer. So yeah, but, it's interesting. It's very, very interesting. But as long as you're getting it out and you're putting some content out each and every week, you'll keep your fan base and yeah, things will continue to grow, which is, which is what you want. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so that that's good. So you have your goals for your reselling business going into the next few months for, well, I mean, we're in quarter four already, but working on, I'm assuming you're just working on trying to get better items or just more items. Are you trying to be more of like a higher seller or a quantity seller? Um, yeah, good question. I would say my sort of average sale price is around the $40 when you exclude furniture. So, you know, it's, it's not sort of that, it's probably a higher end um, sale price, really. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a lot of shoes. I focus quite heavily on shoes. I spend yeah. a lot of time cleaning shoes, but I just oh. find it a great category. Um, I've always put that on the back burner. Like I have, that's, I've gotten all of my clothes because I just went to the bins. I got all of them. They've all been washed, pictured, listed, and I just have to inventory a few more. But the last thing is shoes because I kind of like let them pile up so then I can clean them all in one fell swoop and just yeah. get on. With I, I do shoes first thing on a Monday morning, you know, like 9am on a Monday morning. Just get it done. Just go and shoot. I clean. know. It, yeah, I need to. Sort of like, that's the way I like to get it done because I the week will go on and I will continue to put it off if it's not done first thing on a, on a Monday morning. So I that's kind of the way I've been able to get around it. But look, I guess for me over the next couple of months leading into Q4, I, I really want to sort of look more into retail arbitrage. I think Ooh. you know buying items that are brand new and boxed are obviously going to be what people are searching for for Christmas. It's easy not to list. So much, yeah, easy to list. Um, you know, you'll, you'll get a few more dollars because it is brand new. Um, obviously the profit margin won't quite be there, but I've only just started to play in retail arbitrage a little bit, buying shoes from, you know, the Nike uh, factory outlets and things like that. But nice. it's just, it's opened my eyes to a whole new sort of sourcing world um, that yeah. I haven't been a part of. And I think, you know, obviously one thing in growing your business is also not only expanding your knowledge of different niches, but I think another real crucial category is the way you source your items as well and having, you know, multiple different ways of doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, it's it's now only recently been retail arbitrage and it's always been, you know, thrift stores. Um, it's always been Facebook Marketplace for furniture. But I, I would really like to look into wholesale. I haven't done a lot of it. Mm, um, okay. 
you know, buying pallets or going to those storage sheds and, and seeing what's there. Um, you can make a video about it. <laughs> well, look, they're all, they're all great video ideas. I yeah. put a retail arbitrage video out and people loved it because, yeah. you know, some people just don't do that. They don't um, know it exists. They don't know it's an option. Well, they don't understand the, the numbers side of things is what I'm hearing. You know, they're yeah. like, I, I get it. You're buying it from the store, but how do you actually make any money out of it? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've, I've definitely, with my background in sales, I know the numbers side of it fine i can i can go out and source but i've just not paid any time and attention to go out to a retail outlet and do some digging for a good deal yeah um, same and uh and then obviously uh, sort of your warehouse wholesale type buying as well obviously that's going to be large and more bulky and i've only got a couple of you know storage containers here at the moment yeah. I, I don't have a heap of stuff um but what i am finding is over the last sort of three or four months 50 percent of the stock that i've bought has already sold so I know that I'm buying the right items, um, but I think to grow and increase the sales numbers, I've got to buy more items and hopefully hold that 50%, you know, sort of sales cycle. Yeah. Um, And I think that's going to come from picking different categories that you know sell well, but also picking different sort of ways of sourcing um, and just trying to sort of, you know, grow and evolve how you go about things. Um, So next few months, I'm I'm definitely going to start to just trial things. Look, they might not work. I might never do it again, but Get a try. Yeah, I think you're, you're leaving money on the table if you don't at least give a category a go that you've never played in before. Um, someone messaged me on Instagram and said to get into baby, baby's clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like, I can't even remember the name. It was, oh, I'll have to find it. But anyway, it was a category that I'm personally not out in the op shops looking for baby's clothes. No. <laughs> but she showed me all of this like eBay comp solds on this certain brand. Mm-hmm. I wish I had it. I'm, I'm trying to find it. But she basically said, have a look at this, go into your thrift stores. You're not always going to find it, but just keep it on the back burner. And sure enough, I found one and I ended up selling it for $60 on eBay. And like, I just love that part of the community. Wow. Yeah. Going, always learning oh, something new. Yeah. I would never buy baby clothes to save myself, let alone in a thrift store. I wouldn't even know what to look. I don't have kids myself personally, but <laughs> not me. no, but like to, to go into a thrift store and do that because of what somebody said, I'm now aware when I'm out there, I'm looking for that. If kind you of see thing. It. So I, I think I, I encourage in my videos for people to just pick every single week or maybe every single time they're in a thrift store, to just look in a different category and one do a thing. comp sold one item. Just, yeah. just do it for one. And then if you get All a right. bit of success with it, put it in your bolo list. All right, I'm now looking for these. Yeah. And when you do that for one, two, three, four, five years, you can almost buy the entire thrift store. Because you, oh you know what I mean? Like yeah. I just think you can really grow fast if you have the openness to go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start looking at things. And I think with reselling from what I've heard from people is they just, they just do clothing. They just do shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they have a very fixed mindset to want to branch out into something else. Yeah. Um, and I think if you're going to have ultimate success, you can sort of adapt to a few different spaces and play with a few different things and know better than giving it a go, you know, really early on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, that's sort of my focus for the next few months to, to yeah. grow the businesses, just to learn more and yeah. uh, try and source more. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And you can't keep all your eggs in one basket. Like you got to keep learning, keep growing. That's the only way you're going to know what works for you and your business model. Um, but I feel like the cliche at the end of the day is if you list more, you're going to sell more. So, I mean, if you can find good sales, good deals, and even if it's like a 15 or $20 profit, then, you know, sometimes it might just be good just to keep it going, keep the flow going in your stores and stuff. So um, good. I, I, I like those. I like those goals. They're, I mean, they're very attainable goals too. And I feel like everybody yeah. can do those, you know, just pick one new thing to learn or to try out. And you just never know that might be like in two years from now, the only thing you saw. So um, exactly. It's, yeah. it, it, it's crazy. So, um, so we know your reselling goals and then obviously I'm assuming I know your YouTube goals, but getting monetized, hopefully soon ish, yeah. getting more subscribers, obviously. Um, but obviously just continually putting out um, valuable content, I'm sure. Yeah, I, July 8th was my first video. Um, and I, I wanted to get about 70 videos, I think it was by Christmas time. I've really got this like a monetization by Christmas is a goal for me. Yeah. I think if I can get to monetization for the first of January next year, um, that would be basically six months of doing YouTube. So I've it's looked doable. at it like, yeah, it, look, it's, it's, I kind of just think when I'm putting up, out a video and doing those five hours for that specific video. This is the biggest six months of, you know, 
workload and you know yes. doing work for not much return um, and then if you can get to the point where you can continue to do what you do and you get some form, it doesn't need to be a lot, but just, just something to come back from exactly. it. Um, it's just that motivation, as much as the comments are great, that side of things as well would just continue to spur me on. Um, mm -hmm. But I also want to learn more about video editing because like you, I'm, I'm very interested in it. Yeah. Um, and I'm coming when I started this channel from scratch. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, my first video was like it's never a great video your first video but i was really bad with the editing i just didn't know what software to use and how to actually you know trim a clip and yeah. oh, how to put a b-roll over the top and how to yeah, all of it i just i was so rock bottom um but what i, I want to do is more than, i want to get into a new sort of um you know maybe purchase a different software because i'm just using a free service at the moment um and maybe do some classes or something i don't know like learn ways to edit cool videos because yeah. I love it. I just don't know much about it. So yeah. monetization, I, but yeah. making cool videos, I think would be the other. Yeah, I think you could get there too. I mean, you're very like open-minded and you're willing to learn and to put in the time for it. Um, and I feel like a lot of people are going to recognize that and just want to follow along with your journey, no matter where it takes you. Like, obviously, yeah. maybe you won't always do three times a week and then your topics might change, which is good. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's, it's just a really nice creative outlet um, with YouTube and just being able to expand. I use Adobe Premiere Pro. It's, um, you like it? yeah, I love it. I, cause I can, uh, you know, what's the right word? I, I, I can physically see like the audio, like, and see like the, the peaks and valleys of it to make sure everything's neutral. Um, it's easy to just, there, there's like quick little hacks. Like if I, it, fully edited a video and I'm watching it back and then I missed something um, in my previous software, I could cut it out, but then I'd have to drag back each clip back to back to back. But then with this one, there's just like a quick little feature and you just click a, a little arrow button. If you click a clip, everything to the right of it um, will get highlighted and then you just drag and drop and it's, it's wow. so much time is saved. Um, cool. There's a lot what of cool- using, What were you using beforehand? Um, I used Adobe, well, it was Adobe Rush. Um, and then before that, even it was Filmora, Wondershare, something like that. Yeah. I'm on, see, I'm on OpenShot at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, just a, just a free download service type thing. I mean, it's great. It's fine. It gets, you know, sort of everything done, but you can't put too many cool effects on it. Like I think you can with, um, Adobe Premiere Pro. Yeah. And I think it's a membership where you have to buy it or something with that. Yeah. So, so the, the normal amount for at least in US dollars, it's normally $21.99 a month. Um, but I think I got in on like a, on a um, promotion or something and I got, and I'm on like $15.99 a month right now, 16 bucks a month. So I think it's worth it. Um, oh, I think it's worth it too. It, it's, it's certainly, I know through watching people that have that software, they, they just are able to create, you know, better content. And obviously that's why you pay for it. It's a better service. So it's fun. Uh, I mean, you get to learn something new every week. I mean, don't be overwhelmed with it. And like, if you're trying to learn something, honestly, just YouTube it or Google it. Like you don't even need to pay for a course even like all of it is, that's what I love. YouTube is like, it's free content. Like people create free content for you. You're already watching it. So you're just going to have to watch an extra or five, 10 or 15 second ad. And then YouTube pays them for you. Like you don't even have to pay them. It's so cool. Amazing. Yeah. I, love it. I can see why you've chosen YouTube as your only form of social media. That's for sure. Yeah, um, it's I'm, good. I'm, I'm impressed by that. I, I should really sort of trial a week or two where I don't use it. I just focus you on YouTube. And do no, a video on and, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got all these ideas. You've given me about five video ideas in this. I know hour. you need to write them down. I'll leave, I'll leave them in, in the, in the hangout. So when you watch it back, you can take notes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. No worries. So, um, we are going to wrap it up there cause I got to get to bed soon. It is nighttime mm -hmm. here morning for him, but, um, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Um, especially with Facebook marketplace, because I feel like a lot of people can benefit from that. Um, but it's also just nice to hear, um, your reseller journey, how you've gone on so far. And I think you have a very big future ahead of you in reselling primarily because of who you are, your personality and your, um, dedication to it and wanting to persevere. And I feel like at the end of the day, that and your consistency with it and wanting to be better is going to get you to where you need to go. So. For sure. No, awesome. And I'm, I'm really, really excited to watch you continue to grow as well. You know, 1200 or so already. It's, um, Thank you. 
it's it's motivating for sure. It's it's watching other creators like yourself and, and seeing the success that you're having and you know ticking off the monetization side of things, which I know would have been a real goal of yours. Um, it's um it's pretty cool to I guess get on your channel and, and just be a guest as well because yeah, uh, you know watch it last you know a few months really and uh, I, I hope they obviously have a heap of success one in the recent one but also in the uh, in the channel as well because you're you're doing a great job and I, I can only see uh, you know sort of ballooning from here so um, yeah. yeah well done it was yeah. awesome awesome to be on today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, if you guys have not subscribed to Matt already, the Aussie flipper, um, I will leave his links in the description below. So make sure you go and give him a watch, a like, a subscribe, show him some love. And that is it for me, guys. Do you have anything else you need to say before we go? I don't. Thank you very much for tuning in, you guys. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. I love the hangouts. These are good fun. Yeah, you should do them. All right, you guys. I'll catch you in my next video. Bye. See you guys.